Now look, let's talk about the issue of the natural gas pipeline that you mentioned. We can assume there are two reasons. The first reason is that Russia has become so weakened that it is incapable of ensuring repair of the natural gas pipeline. So, it is weakened after the war with Ukraine. It is weakened because of the war with Ukraine or for another reason. This may be the first reason, and, in this case, this is very bad. It means that our opinion that we need to try to bring other peacekeepers and have other allies is substantiated by this argument as well. The second reason is that we can assume that this is not a sign of weakness, but a mutual agreement between Azerbaijan and Russia. They agreed. Yes, they agreed to exert pressure on Armenians again, scare them, etc. It turns out that we can still come to the same conclusion, meaning we can't rely on the Russians and need to consider bringing other peacekeepers. In both cases, this shows that the presence of Russian troops does not help ensure security of the people. That is to say, the troops are not peacekeepers. They are not keeping the peace. Yes, this is not taking place through mass killings or hostilities. But I must say that Azerbaijan is not interested at all because if Azerbaijan empties Armenians through killings, there will be a lot of commotion in the world, the media will report the killings, etc. Why does Azerbaijan need that? Azerbaijan needs to meet its objectives step by step and without causing uproar, by shelling two villages, switching off the natural gas switch and electricity in three villages, and shutting down roads in, say, four villages. The important thing for Azerbaijan is to achieve its outcomes. Fine, but why aren't the authorities speaking out about this in any way? They are keeping silent. We see that if the authorities speak out, they will acknowledge the fact that their principled stance, that is to say, their principled approach to come to terms, reconcile and open the era of peace is radically wrong. Like all authorities, these authorities are also having a hard time accepting their mistakes. The authorities had said that, well, for instance, why did we Armenians transfer more territories, that is to say, 4,500 kilometers of territories after November 9, 2020 than during the 44-day war when Azerbaijan succeeded in seizing 3,500 kilometers of territories? It is because the authorities hope that if they transferred the territories and everything and even more, we will live in peace. There would be peace. Why should there be more fighting? You mentioned the issue of Yerask. This has nothing to do with the border of Artsakh, right? It is in a totally different direction, particularly in the direction of Nakhchivan. This goes to show the intentions, and unfortunately, we can't predict any positive outcome for the time being. Fine, but we had to expect to see all our compatriots in Artsakh stand up, right? After all, what does it mean to live without natural gas for more than a week? After all, they needed to ask the peacekeepers what their role is and what they are doing here. First of all, it should be mentioned that the people of Artsakh are rather weakened after the war and are twice under the pressure of the Azerbaijanis and the Russian peacekeepers, and especially after the signing of the infamous declaration between Aliyev and Putin on February 22nd. Yes, in essence, Russia is Azerbaijan's ally. After all, the declaration is about allied cooperation. For instance, there is a point in the declaration that if the territorial integrity of one of the parties is in jeopardy, this shall be viewed as encroachment, etc. That is to say, our compatriots in Artsakh are simply incapable. The authorities of Armenia needed to raise the issue because, unfortunately, the authorities of Artsakh made serious mistakes during and after the war. <laughs> You remember when the U.S. and France co-chairs of the OSC Minsk Group arrived, and Arai Karatunyan was in Yerevan. He did not even deign to meet with them because the Russian co-chair was not present. Now they complain and ask why the co-chairs of the OSC Minsk Group are not responding. Why should they respond? When they were responding, you didn't want to meet with them. The problem is the following. I wouldn't blame our compatriots in Artsakh because they are in dire conditions. I would blame the parliamentary opposition in Armenia and especially the authorities more because, at the end of the day, the issue of security of Artsakh, which is a component part of Armenia, is a matter of security of everyone. I repeat, the notions that they meaning the Azerbaijanis will be satisfied with Artsakh, are in vain and wrong. No, Artsakh is simply a subsequent layer, and it is a little delay for their pretensions to other provinces of Armenia.
Հայաստանի այլ մարզերի նկատմամ։ Բաժանորդագրվեք ազգային ժողովրդավարական բևերի յութուբյան ալիքին։